All right, so the weekend is over, so things are definitely moving a little a little slower now. Uh, back to normal life, work, and all that. Um, so I did get the cable chains extended, so I did add more to um, to this chain, um, and I did add one more. Actually, I removed a link from the uh, the top chain. Um, I've now got the um, liquid cooling tube in, and I did kind of just run um, the wires just to approximate where they are. Um, and I just wanted to have a quick conversation about that. So I'm really impressed with the kit for like 98% of, of the wiring part. Um, the wiring that they give you is a shielded wire, which is great uh, for both the uh, limit switches and the uh, stepper motors. So that's certainly an area that uh, you could cheap out on quite easily. So you can see there's uh, just that little bit of silver there that is the shielding in the wire. Uh, so that'll just help uh, when I run my spindle through it. Uh, so I do have my uh, VFD and spindle cable that I will be putting in there. Um, and that'll just help keep the uh, limit switches working properly when in close proximity to the uh, high voltage of the VFD. Um, the only, uh, there's lots of extra cable for all of the, the various motors and stuff. So this is, you know, the, the runs are all to the, um, you know, approximately where I need them to be. And this is the excess. So one, like that one is a little bit short. That one's got two wraps. So, you know, quite a bit of extra cable, which is great. Um, so depending on where you want to put your electronics enclosure, um, you know, you're in pretty good shape as far as where, where you might want to locate it. The one area that was a little bit weak uh, and just kind of oddly surprising was the Y axis limit switch. Uh, so I've got it. Uh, this is, this is as much cable as there is coming out of the chain and it runs to the back of the machine right to here. So there isn't really any excess uh, cable there. It just comes out the chain and that's it. Um, so it's one of the odd ones. Uh, it's, it's quite short. I'm not, I think it'll reach where I want the electronics to enclosure to be, which is just down basically mounted here on the side of the table is my current plan. Um, but just kind of an odd one, uh, since there was so much, uh, extra cable for the other, uh, switches and, and whatnot, like my, uh, the X, uh, limit switches run, I ran it over to the far side of the machine. I want it to home, uh, to the back right corner. And so I move my X axis, uh, switch over there, um, as well as the Z switch, lots of cable to run down the, uh, uh, run down the side there and uh, plug in. So lots of extra cable in pretty much all of the other areas, except for that one. So a little bit strange, not not the end of the world, but definitely a little bit odd. Um, so just something to be aware of. You may, depending on where you want to put your electronics enclosure um, or your wire pathing, you may want to have a little bit of extra of at least the two, uh, the two wire um, chunk. So this is 22 gauge uh, shielded uh, two core wire. So you may want to think about that and add a little bit extra. So other than that, um, all the electronics uh, so far uh, worked, you know, kind of work as expected. The uh, other issue I ran into is, and it's been pointed out in a couple places, is once you get everything together, it can be really difficult to lubricate things. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, I did um, mention it earlier. I used the, um, this uh, mini uh, grease gun from Shal Tools, um, and it's worked, it's worked great. It, it wasn't super expensive. I think it was $24 with uh, some grease to get you started, um, and it comes with a few different tips, and it's worked well. The interesting thing is when you look at, um, I'm just gonna take the phone out of here. When you look at using or re-lubricating, if you need to service things in the future, um, some of these are, are hard to get to. So 
you know, that isn't going to be too bad. I can get um, the nipple off of there and I can get to that not too bad. Um, these are going to be, this is on the um, Z rail. These are basically impossible. Um, so make sure you take your time and fill those up well um, because, yeah, re-greasing those is going to be, I don't want to say impossible, but pretty hard without taking apart uh, a good chunk of that uh, Z rail, which is unfortunate. And similar, you know, this one back here on the back of, sorry, it won't uh, light up as much as I want, but on the back of the uh, Y rails, it's it's doable. It's going to be a little finicky to get uh, that, that plug out of there, but it is doable. It's just going to be a bit of effort. Um, and then on the X rail, again, not, not bad, um, but certainly could be a little bit more accessible. Um, so just something to keep in mind. The other thing that was interesting, um, I didn't pre lubricate the, uh, ball screw nuts. Uh, I just, I missed it in the instructions. Um, so pay attention to that. And these this little set of, of these um, grease injector nipples, they come in this bag with these little uh, dots to put over the screw covers. Um, so just keep the, in mind that those are in there um, and it's much easier to grease them uh, before you bolt everything to them, but also make sure that when you are putting them together that the actual nipple does stick out somewhere that's accessible. Now, the thing that I did notice with that is even with it accessible, um, this is technically the correct attachment. So it's a um, essentially a little rubber piece that would go over that uh, nipple and allow you to inject the grease in there. Um, obviously, as you can see, it won't go on there. It's too tight to this bracket. So your option would be to, to remove, eh, I don't know what your options are. <laughs> None of them are good. I guess you could remove these screws and, uh, and try and push it over that way. That might muck with alignment and things like that. I don't know that that's the right answer. Um, but what I ended up finding was that with the, at least on this shell um, grease gun, with the very narrow point that this gun has, if you push it into here, you can feel, uh, push it into that, just that little recess. There's a little ball bearing in there that plugs, that's on, a, I'm assuming a spring, and it plugs that hole. If you push that in and then tilt the gun to one of the sides, so if you go straight on, you're sitting on the ball bearing and the, the grease won't go in. But if you push on it, you'll feel the ball kind of disengage and then just push it to the, to the side you can actually get grease in there and you can see a little bit's coming out there. Um, so that was how I was able to get um, those greased after I had them installed. Uh, so I did end up forgetting one and I had to actually disassemble some of the Y axis and fix that up. So keep that in mind when you're putting it all together, um, just where those lubrication points are and stuff. So for my build, uh, there's a few different ways to do the wiring. Um, you can solder uh, the wires they give you to the motors, um, that sort of thing. I have a ferrule uh, terminal kit, so I'm going to spend some time here and put the ferrules on all of the ends. And then once the ferrules are on, I can use the included uh, connectors here um, just to connect those. If they do give me any grief or I want to switch them out later, I certainly can. Uh, just by snipping the wire a little bit and then soldering it after. Uh, but for now, I'm going to use the kit a little bit for expedience and a little bit because it's included and just trying to uh, make things, you know, as, I guess, as stock as was delivered and then go from there with modifications. Uh, the one modification I am making right away um, is sort of to the power supply. So the power supply you get is a 24 volt uh, 110 or 220 power supply. Uh, keep in mind that that power supply 
is just the power supply. You need to supply a cable or a connector um, to two mains. Um, unfortunately, the power supply is in uh, downstairs, but I will I will do a follow up video. I'm just 3D printing a cover for it because otherwise there would be exposed uh, mains terminals that uh, you know kids or, or even I could uh, poke at, um, and I definitely don't want that. So I'm just 3D printing a housing to go over that, and I've got a um, uh, a mains plug that I can use. So I'll show that in in a follow up video, but keep that in mind that the kit does not include that. So to actually get power to the power supply, you do need to go, you know, you need to supply your own cable and wire it up and be comfortable with that. So uh, that is one thing I will, will say the mechanical instructions have been really quite good. The cable chain instructions, while definitely an add on, they were, they were good. Um, but the wiring instructions, there's a bit of instruction around connecting the X Pro V5, um, but not really any directions on running the physical cables in the cable chains. You know, uh, some might say that's self explanatory um, and people should just know. Um, but given, you know, the fact that you're taking it out of the box, you're putting all the other parts together, they show you how many, you know, screws to put where and, and whatnot. Uh, going that extra step and um, and including you know how and where to run the different wires would certainly be um, helpful in my opinion, um, but it's definitely a, an area that's lacking is is just that you know how to run the wires. Um, so I will go over that a little bit um, in a different video, um, but I'm going to get the terminals done and move from there. Awesome. If you enjoy the update, guys. Thank you.